SEO lovers. Today I'm talking to Neil Patel. Neil Patel is an entrepreneur, angel investor, and analytics expert. He's also the founder of Kiss Metrics, Crazy Egg, and the hugely popular website, Quick Sprout. Neil is a prolific blogger. He's blogged about everything covering marketing, SEM, SEO, social media, you name it, and Neil and his team have probably blogged about it. So I'm super excited to chat to him today with questions from students of my Recipe for SEO Success e-course and the 10 day SEO challenge. Let's get started. Hi Neil, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited, I'm a big fan, so I'll have to try and stay calm. And we've just discussed that you're actually in bed during this interview, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's right. I have no power in my home, so I checked into a hotel. Well, it's good that you're comfortable because I've got a lot of questions to grill you with. Everyone was very excited when I said that I was going to be talking to you. So get ready to be grilled. Let's get stuck in with the first question. So, Sounds good. So you're hugely prolific. As I uh, said earlier, pretty much every day my inbox has a Neil Patel email. I have a folder where I keep all the articles that I have to read sometimes and it gets so full that sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I need a whole day to read Neil Patel articles. How do you get all of that done? How do you produce so much content? Yeah, the way I produce so much content is by a few things. It's one, I just focus on content production. Two, I read a lot. So it's actually really easy for me to produce it because I'm just learning a lot every single day. And it's my job by me producing a lot of content, blogging, gets my name out there, gets my company's names out there, and it generates signups. Yeah, so it's brand awareness, but it actually does convert for you as well. And um, what would your tips be for, you know, a small business person, you know, maybe it's their business is, you know, they're a window cleaner or they run a school or whatever. How, how do they carve out time in their week to produce content? You don't have to do it every week. You can even start off once a month. The key is just making sure you're consistent in addition to that. You want to make sure that you're always consistently helping other people out. So the content isn't supposed to just sell your products or services. It's to help people solve the problems. If you're a window cleaner, you can talk about, uh, you know, uh, how to clean all your windows, how to clean all your windows in less than 10 minutes and give them all the tips on being efficient and thorough or whatever it may be. Right. Yeah, so always being useful and answering those customer questions. Yeah, exactly. Another thing that always interests me is, you know, a lot of your content is free. You've got fantastic guides on everything from copywriting to SEO, you know. So a lot of it is, is free. How, you know, and I, you don't need to give everything away, but how do you make a profit when you give so much away? My software companies. They make me all my money. Okay, so it, your, your, the quick sprout is really, it's just a giving back kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good, all right. Now this is a question um, from Max, and this is something that you've blogged about a lot, and I often refer to your posts. He says, I know that longer posts and regular posts work better, but how is a small business person meant to write a 3,000 word blog post every week? You don't have to, you, you should just end up writing whatever works for you, right? Like if you can't write 3,000 words, that's okay. You can write a thousand words. You don't have to do it weekly either. You can do it monthly or whenever you get a chance. Ideally, you should be consistent, but just something is better than nothing. So do you, do you believe that kind of infrequent and sort of very rich content is better than lots and lots of short kind of thin content? Would you rather do one really awesome post a month than three or four kind of Yes. Go for awesome. Even if you do it like one out of 10 or if you, even if you do it 10 times less, that's okay. Just go for awesome. You've obviously got a lot of um, great tools um, that, that you produced yourself, but what are your top five content marketing tools that might be useful to say a small business person? Yeah. I use BuzzSumo. It helps you come up with uh, content ideas. I use Hello Bar to convert those visitors into customers, which is free. BuzzSumo has a free plan as well. I use Ahrefs to see who's linking to my competitors. Um, those are the main tools and WordPress, free blogging platform. Okay, next question is from Belinda. When it comes to off-page SEO, which tactic do you think is most powerful? Off-page SEO, link building is the most powerful tactic that I see. So when it comes to link building, um, I think a lot of people find that quite challenging. You know, we're told that 
you've got to be build, earning links, not building links. Um, and you know, there's a lot of misinformation around, you know, is it okay to guess post? Is it okay to do press releases? What, what are your thoughts on the best strategies for building links? The best strategies for building links is simple. Go to Ahrefs or Open Site Explorer, put in your competitor URLs, and hit up each of the sites manually and ask them for a link. It's that simple. Just say, hey, I noticed you linked to X, Y, and Z website. Have you checked out mine? We cover A, B, and C things that they don't discuss. Uh, feel free to share it with your readers if you think it'll be valuable for them. Cheers, Neil. Like, that's it. I know that um, a lot of students on my course are w worried that they'll come across a little bit spammy if they start writing emails like that. Just a numbers game, but it works. It does work, yeah. So it's kind of, you might send 20 out and one of, you might, one of them might give you a link, but it's worth That's it. correct. But you have to send like, uh, you have to look at their website and make the email custom tailored and personalized. That's it. And I think it's the same as if you wanted to get like an article uh, printed in a magazine, you wouldn't just send any old article, you'd, you'd, you'd write an article that suited the magazine and the audience. So you have to kind of think about that. Question from Sahara. Um, how will the potential 10k tweets, so the fact that they're talking about increasing the character count in tweets affect SEO? I have no idea yet. Well, yet to be found out, right? It's more text to index, but who knows? Recently, Search Engine Journal uh, published an article about Google's search quality elevator guidelines and the need for expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. So the whole EAT principle. So basically, I, I, my interpretation of that was that articles that are written by um, experts are more likely to kind of rank and, and do better. Nairi asks, does this mean we have to get experts to write all our blog posts? No, or you can become an expert too. How do we do that, Neil? Well, as you get more traffic, more emails, more social shares, as you get more people linking to your site, you will become an authority. You go speak at conferences, again, you'll become an authority. Sure, it takes time and it's not something that's overnight, but it's possible. Yeah, and I guess, you know, as Nairi, for example, works in, um, in sort of with children, her website's about children, and, you know, so she's wondering now. Um, <laughs> Oh, bless you. She's wondering, you know, should she be getting pediatricians to write articles, you know? Um, but I guess, again, it's like maybe you can't get a pediatrician to write every single article, but one out of five might, and then you build up your own authority. Do you think that would work? Yeah. Yeah, I think it will work. Okay. Um, a question from Beck. I've been working on SEO for a while. I know that ranking isn't everything, but what other key performance indicators should I be looking at to track my success? It isn't everything, but if you're trying to track your success, I just look at a few things. One, rankings. One, how many backlinks you're getting. Two, social shares, right? Because it's just more traffic. Even if it's not SEO, more eyeballs is eventually more links. Um, and then I would just stack up to see how you're climbing compared to your competitors. You can use like Ahrefs to monitor your competitors and yourself and just see how you stack up over time. Lots of people stress about bounce rate and having a high bounce rate on articles what, what would you advise around that like what's a good bounce rate don't worry about what's good or what's bad just focus on the user experience and over time it'll improve a question from sam if i said to you tomorrow that you can only choose one marketing tactic or maybe one marketing channel uh, which would it be and why content marketing it's how you can compete with the big boys without spending a lot of money the big boys don't write too much content it takes so much longer to get it published you Google loves content, it ranks, people love sharing it on the social web. It's just a lot less competitive to go after content than it is to try to build links one by one through SEO. And I think as well with content, you can go after those long tail kind of niche keywords that maybe don't have huge traffic, but you can mop up lots of traffic by yep. writing articles for those, whereas the, sometimes the big boys seem to focus on the one or two word terms. So that's an opportunity as well. What do you think is going to be the next big thing in marketing this year? I would say personalization. I keep saying that every year, but as you can <laughs> see, the web is becoming more personalized. Just everything from like uh, marketing tactics. If you're on your mobile phone, you're not seeing pop-ups as much anymore. You're now seeing blogs doing things like enter your phone number. We'll text you when you get the latest next 
blog posts, whatever it may be. It's just all becoming personalized, the experience, so that way users are getting what they want, when they want, versus just seeing stuff that's not relevant to them. That brings me on very nicely, a good segue there, um, into pop-ups. A question that came back a lot about your site, and you're kind of known for it, and I can see you smiling because you know what I'm going to ask you, is you are pop-up crazy. How, wh what is your attitude towards pop-ups? And, and, and obviously you find them effective, but how are they working for you? As long as they look good, you'll get very little complaints. And what do you use to produce all those pop-ups? Hellobar.com. You lose Hello Bar. I was using Hello Bar for a long time on my WordPress site, and there used to be a plugin that supported it, but then the plugin doesn't seem to be. Oh, there's a new plugin. Oh, is that what's called? For Hello Bar .com, they give you a customized plugin for each person, so it's not a generic plugin. Oh, that explains it great. Well, I can get it back again because I was very sad when that plugin disappeared. You know, when you publish an article, how long does it take for it to get indexed on Google? Uh, it, it takes usually a day or two. If it takes longer, just go into Google Search Console and submit the URL manually. If I quickly, quickly wanted to check my site for errors um, and crawl errors and blocks, what would be the tool that you would use to do that with? Google Search Console is not that bad. Uh, Screaming Frog. Screaming Frog, okay. Uh, so Screaming Frog is your, is your best favorite crawling tool. So when we're analyzing our sites, we talked about um, KPIs, and I'm assuming you use Google Analytics like most people. Um, what metrics uh, do you look at in Google Analytics? Conversion rate, just general traffic. Those are the two. Just, just our general traffic, unique visitors, and conversion rates. That's it. Now, you have uh, two uh, softwares that you were the, the founder of, Kissmetrics and Crazy Egg. Can you tell us a little bit about both of those? Yeah, Kissmetrics helps you track the lifetime value of your customers. So, you know, if they keep coming back, they keep buying, what's the value of them? Yeah. Crazy Egg helps you improve the conversion rate on your website. So if someone comes to your site, where are they clicking? Where are they not clicking? What's causing a conversion? Can you run an A-B test, right? It helps you do all those things. Well, we've whisked through all the questions super quickly. What's next for you this year? I, you know, I see that you've, you've shaved all your hair off, which I think is looking awesome. Uh, but other than, other than hairdos, what's next on the agenda for Mr. Patel? Just trying to provide more content, educational information, doing a lot more webinars and things like that. So maybe they can become better marketers or grow their business or whatever their goals are. Hopefully I can help them achieve them. Neil, thank you so much. That was short and sweet. I'll let you get back and have a snooze in that very comfy looking bed. Thank you so I will. much thank for your you. time. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Um, and everybody, I'll include links to all Neil's sites, his Facebook, his Twitter, the various websites we've mentioned today in the show notes. So thanks very much, Neil. Thank you. He's tired. <laughs> I know. I've been like going in and out. I, have to, I don't drink coffee either, which makes the day harder. Oh my God. How can you survive if you don't drink coffee? It's the only thing that keeps me alive, man. Um, yeah. That's what happens when you work out of bed. You actually get tired. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, we just have to do a bit of this. Um, so...